But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about this. Bad friend. Look at somebody and say, bad friend. Bad, friend. bad, results. bad results. And this is for the young folks, old folks, middle-aged folks, everybody folks. You are, listen, you are where you are right now because of who you surrounded yourself with. Oh, that, oh, that preach elder. Everything about your situation right now reeks of your friend choices. You won't overcome your friend choices. You will be a victim of them for the rest of your life if you keep them around. I felt it. I tell you, I woke up. I don't know if it was my big toe, little toe. I don't know which toe it was. I woke up and God said, tell these folks that in this end time, if you're going to cling to God, you got to let go of some folks. Amen. Now, I'm going to break it down to you. Now, don't, don't go to deleting yet. Let me <laughs> let's get an understanding. But you are. That's who you are right now. You can't complain to God. You can't get before God and say, God, why? Lord, why this and why that? You don't have, you don't, after today, after this, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is get before God and say, okay, who is it? Amen. Which one? Amen. That's it. Quit complaining about where you are. Quit fussing. Quit coveting. Quit wanting what I do. Because uh, all of that is wrapped around the influence that are speaking in your life. The influences. They're speaking louder than the Holy Ghost. But that's my dog, Ace Boom Coon. I didn't had him since I was a kid. Well, keep having him and you're going to keep having what he has. God never told you that this Christian walk was going to be easy. As a matter of fact, it's a lonely walk. Sometimes you have to walk alone. You can't get no hand clap. You see that? Just fade them in. Sometimes you have to walk alone. Sometimes you have to walk away. Young people, sometimes you have to walk away. Where I'm going, they can't go. Amen. Look at somebody and say, bad friends, bad results. Genesis 3 and 1 says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. What you talking about, snake? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. God didn't mean it that way. In the garden, the devil came to Eve as a serpent, a common animal that was familiar to her. That's very important. I know this because she had a conversation with it and she wasn't alarmed. If she wasn't alarmed, that means she was used to seeing this snake. <laughs> it was no big thing. For, the, for her because the snake was there and it was talking to her. She answered the snake. No, the Lord didn't say that. Or well, the Lord said this. Now, if she had been alarmed, she'd have been like, what the snake talking for? That'd be Genesis 3 and whatever. <laughs> it would have been a whole different thing. But for, the, for her to just have this, have this conversation, that means this snake... It was common to see this snake in the garden. Can I keep going? Y'all know where I'm going. If the devil had appeared as the devil, his purpose would have been revealed immediately. So if he had showed up as the devil, she'd have been like, oh, wait a minute now. And Eve would have taken him for God's enemy 
instead of a garden reptile. So the devil couldn't come as the devil or she would have known it was the devil. But the devil came as something familiar. The devil always comes in the appearance of a friend or someone that seems harmless and familiar to you. Yeah. Yeah, I just preached. I know. He always comes in the appearance of a friend, especially somebody that you don't want to let go. Now, if you have abandonment issues, your parents divorced, somebody left your home, somebody left you, somebody wasn't there, whatever, it's very hard for you to let folks go. That's an abandonment issue 101. That's why you're one of two things. You're introverted and you stay away from folks because you know once you get them, you're going to ride and die with them. Or you cling to everyone and don't want to let anyone go. Those are both abandonment issues that come from some sort of abandonment, whether it be divorce, whether it be whatever the case. And that hinders people more than anything else. Most of the sins in people's lives come from those issues, having the wrong people around. And those people don't look like the devil, but they are. But how can he be the devil? He, I've been knowing him this and this, this. What are his intentions? What is he motivated by? What is his reasoning? Who is he listening to? So the devil always comes in the appearance of a friend or someone that seems what? Harmless. It's that false humility person. You know I got you, man. I got your back. You know, they're talking just like the snake in the garden. Might as well have a, that, that hissy lisp after it. You know I got you. <laughs> what was that? What you? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> what? Uh, when they put in an S where an S don't even go. <laughs> there is a difference now. Get an understanding. Now, this don't mean go and delete all of your contacts. Amen. Watch this. There's a difference between people that do not know the truth and people that hate the truth you know. Okay? Big difference. You may have somebody in your life that don't know the truth. God may use you over a period of time to reach somebody just by them watching how you roll. Okay? But this person can't be against the truth that's in your life. Oh, I know. Amen. Somebody clap for me. Um, Y'all clapping for the word. I was like this thing. But <laughs> this person, they can be in your life. It can be over a long span of time, you know, whatever. It may be a short time, whatever it is. But they're not going against you. They just haven't really gotten where they need to be. That means they're not really an influence in your life. You're more of the influence. Well, you are the influence. Okay? But if they're against the truth that you know, then Houston, we have a problem. Because if you're against the truth that I know, then you're against me. Amen? Matthew 10 and 22. Ye shall be hated of all men for what? My name's sake, but he that endured to the end. So the Bible already tells you, folks are going to hate you for his name's sake. So if they're against the truth that's in you, they're against the truth giver, which is him. And if they're against him, they're against you. So why are you in my life? That's the question you need to ask the Lord. Amen? When selecting friends, they do not have to be where you are, but they can't despise where you are. Does that make sense? So they don't have to be, so you may have some information, they don't have to be where you are, but they can't hate where you are. They can't challenge where you are. They can't despise where you are. Amos 3 and 3, Jay's famous song, how can, we, how can two 
Walk together lest they be agreed. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So you can't walk with people that aren't in agreement. Now, they may like plaid and you like solids. They may like long toenails with a ring on the toe. And you may like... <laughs> we ain't talking about none of that. But when it comes to the word and the truth and what they believe, that is what's going to alter you and your relationship with God. You can't bring the devil into your life and allow him to constantly war against the truth that you believe. Amen. This is exactly what the devil did in the garden. Came to her and warred against the truth. Came as somebody familiar or something familiar. Something that it was no issue that she would even be having this conversation. Did not come as the devil. They never will. Marilyn Manson ain't going to call your house. It's going to be someone familiar. The quality of people around you will always show you who you are. Amen. You must allow God to choose your friends. What? Yeah, let, I'm going to let that marinate. How many times have you done it and blown it? That's because you don't know what you're doing. If you can't see the future, then you can't do it. So you have to let God choose your friends. Young people, you got to let God choose your friends. I'm going to show you how to do it in just a minute. God has, look at somebody and say, God has to choose your friends. Why would God come into your life and bring you a whole new way of living and then put somebody in your life to go against it? He don't need you in an obstacle course. First Corinthians 15 and 33. Do not be deceived and misled. This is the amplified. Evil companionships, communion and associations, corrupt and deprave what? Good manners and morals and what? Character. Some folks would have good character if they didn't hang around a bad character. Yeah. You got Looney Tunes for friends. You have to convince people to like the people you like. Something wrong with you. Yeah. And then wonder why. I have people asking it all the time. Man, it just seemed like all the crazy folk just are drawn to me. Really? How many times that happened? Just every, I mean, something wrong with all my friends. They just, it seemed like they all just, really? Really? Yeah, I think you need to, mm-hmm, I think somebody like that song on uh, Color Purple, somebody trying to, t God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> I don't think this crazy is just going to keep surrounding you like that, unless, yeah, you just keep drawing junk and keep having junk in your life. Your family always on a fast for junk. You can't, you can't even get any spiritual momentum. Because something is always wrong. Something's not all. Look at somebody and say, something's not always wrong. Look at somebody and say, trouble don't last always. If trouble is lasting always, you the trouble. I mean, there should be, I understand you going through stuff, but my goodness, there's only one Job. You got that all the time. It's all the time. Spiritual warfare, brother. Spirit nah, nah. Trouble, no, 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 no. You, there should be some good times. Amen? You don't even have a photo album because it's just bad all the time. <laughs> Where the pictures of the vacation and the happiness? Oh, we don't have no, that's, We We always fasting and praying. But the devil, you know there's a devil. Yeah, obviously, he know you too. That should be some good times sometimes. Look at somebody say, trouble don't last always. 
Trouble will last always if all your friends are trouble. If you make friends with trouble. But evil companionships will corrupt and deprave good manners, morals, and character. See, I'm almost done. Look at this. Your quality of life will be determined mostly by your associations. Who you allow into your life will dictate the struggles and issues you will deal with. The right people can help you be encouraged and strengthened during this journey. When you place yourself under good, solid teaching and leadership, you will grow and overcome many hardships that others could not avoid. But when you surround yourself with harmful, angry folk, selfishness and narcissists you will struggle to find God and walk in his way the very climate of your life will be infused with the issues of your peers you will spend most of your life living down the bad choices you were influenced to make because you kept the wrong people around you or you allowed the bad influences of others to what alter you. Everything was good until this person showed up. Now that this person showed up, everything is bad and something is wrong with everything. But before this person, I know I'm preaching. Whether it's through friends, acquaintances, or even virtual influences, your future can be hindered by the choices they influence you to make. Amen? Amen? All right, young folks, old folks, all kind of folks. This is your prayer. I prayed this not too long ago, and I was shocked. Some folks had to leave me alone, and I thought all was good. But God just said, nope, I can see the future. This is a powerful prayer. Amen? Phone ain't going to ring like it used to. And it don't need to. Amen. Quit holding Riff Raff. Amen. Quit holding on to Riff Raff at the end of the world. World is ending. And what I've learned is Riff Raff don't care much about you. There's obviously something about you that Riff Raff needs. It's your prayer. You pray these things and download this message and keep them. And you need to pray this once a week probably. Maybe once a day. Whomever should not be in my life, take them away. And you got to let God do it too. You can't pray this and then, no, no, I don't know about, no. You pray it, God's going to show, I mean, you're going to get a phone call right after the prayer. Like a name is going to illuminate in your ear. You're going to see this person. It's going to be instant. I promise you. This prayer is going to work. Whomever should not be in my life, take them away. But whomever should be in my life, allow them to grow with me. Whoever has an ill agenda against me, reveal it. Amen. None of y'all are here by chance. I tell y'all all the time, y'all better pray and ask God if you're supposed to be here. You better pray and ask God if I'm right. Amen. Do it. I, I want you to. Help my courage to stand alone. Oh, Because sometimes nobody's going to understand. Oh, sometimes no one is going to understand. Wives, sometimes your husband's not going to understand. That don't mean you get on the phone and talk to another one. That don't mean you get on the phone and talk to your homegirl either. Y'all see the prayer. The prayer is to God. Sometimes your wife, your boy, sometimes your whoever, they're just not going to get this. This part of my life that God is working on, nobody understands. So it's best for me to keep this with God. So God help my courage to stand alone. Make me strong enough to rise above the opinions 
of others. And give me a stance that cannot be altered by others. Y'all sing the song, but you need to pray the words too. Make me adamant. Adamant like Wolverine hands. Don't tell the Lord that. <laughs> That's just a rap lyric. But the adamantium, the most powerful metal that's in those blades in that fictional character. That's where the word derives from. Adamant. That hard. So, God, you pray, make me adamant, unmovable, unshakable, and what? Unbreakable, unbreakable in Jesus Man. And finally, this is so important. Jude 24 tells us, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. This does not mean that when you stumble and fall, he's going to grab you and keep you from falling. That's not what this means. This means that he's going to prepare you so you don't have to fall. He's able to keep you from falling. That means if you keep selecting friends that keep falling, you're going to keep falling. And he can't protect you from your choices. Amen. He can't protect you. Your choices are your choices. So if you give your choices to God, he's able to keep you from Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. I want parents, I want you, and I know we don't have the room on this altar. I mean, we don't have enough, but we're going to try. But I would really like for you to come up here with you, bring your kids, no matter what age they are. And we're just going to pray for them. Uh, because during this time of COVID and all this deception that's going on and the internet becoming just the second nature of man right now. We want to make sure that we can have our kids guarded and protected. You can call your kids up, Jay. Y'all kids, Amy, uh, Ken, you can come up here, uh, Elder Ken, and y'all come, and Jonathan, you come on up. I got grown kids, but they need to come too. Come on, grown kids. Amen. But let's because we're going to just believe God during this time. Y'all, this isn't just an event we have once a year. This is important to the well-being of our children. You know anything about me and this ministry? Now, the EX ministry started on these on kids. That's been the focus that God has given me, the lifespan of the ministry he's blessed me with. So... I just, I, I want to make sure these kids got phones, they got email, they got, and they, they are one click, one search away from something that the devil could use and change their life forever. And we want to break the power of that right now. And I'm, it's going to be in the prayer, but we're going to pray for eyes. I want to see it in, in my sleep. I want to see, I want to walk by and sniff it on them. I need that, I need that level of Holy Ghost power. I can walk by their room and get an electrical charge. Oh! And open that door that should be closed, shouldn't be closed. I'm trying to find out. Y'all ain't see, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, I ain't, I ain't playing. I, I don't play with this stuff because I know what I went through. Amen. And I, amen. I want these kids. I want, I want to be sharp. I want to be, uh, what do they say? Uh, harmless as a dove, but wise as a serpent. So I want to slither around the house. Oh, sh 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 no, I'm just playing. <laughs> Don't do that. Amen. We won't know which side you are. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want that wisdom. I want to be cunning and crafty like that. Amen. Because I want to know when the devil is trying to infiltrate my home and trying to get to my goods. Amen. So put your hands on. Put your hands on. 
Amen. And we're going to believe God. I don't care what the world is doing. It has nothing to do with what's going to go on in our home. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and praise you, God, for your power, for your authority. We thank you, Lord, God, for just being so awesome. We thank you, Lord, for your landmarks and just your old school holiness. The world has tried to pervert that. The world has tried to call that legalism and tried to make us look strange because we take extra care and extra precautions. And we just bowed it for our kids and we just want to know what's going on. Father God, that's the way you created us, and that's the way your spirit works. You said that your spirit would show us these things. You said that it would reveal things to us. So we pray right now that the power of the Holy Ghost will saturate our being, Lord. Enhance our eyes so that we can see past things, see through things, see into the heart of our children, God. Enhance our ears so we can hear things and properly decode things. Father God, enhance our hands so that we can go through things, open things, search for things. Father God, help us to be strong men and women in our homes, to stand guard, to protect what you've given us, God. We thank you for these kids. We thank you for our children. We thank you, Lord. And we love them, God. So, God, I pray right now that you will help us guide our children, guide our seed through this end time. Give us confidence that we need. Give us, Father God, a strength that we need so that we won't be fearful, so we won't pass that on to our children, but that we will have confidence and walk in the spirit and protect them from the wiles of the enemy. Father, even if they're not here with us, even if they're somewhere else, all over the place, wherever they are, God, give us words to say to them. Make us wise to speak wisdom. Help us, Father God, to speak knowledge into them, guidance, and help them through this time. Lord, we love our families, and we want our families to glorify you. So, Father, we pray right now that this level of anointing that we need will come upon us. And if it requires us giving up things, if it requires us moving away from things, and mostly when it requires us to give up certain people, we will do it, God. For the sake of our family, for the sake of our children, for the sake of this generation. Father God, so that we can be guiding lights and helps and not hindrances in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, hug on your children. Love on your family. Come on, big old boy. Bring the muscles here. Come on. Amen.